it kind of feels like I'm playing two characters in one, which is just even more exciting. <laughs> The cast were incredible. I FaceTimed with all of them separate individually before I uh, started because I wanted to to get their uh, characters POV on their relationship with Kate so that I could really make it authentic and like dig to get that chemistry. When I read it, I freaked out. I screamed out loud. I <laughs> I just wasn't expecting it. So I still don't really know what, what happens towards the end of the season. I know every episode we start to unveil that onion more and more and more. The, every layer starts to get peeled apart. We put it to bed by having that entire funeral, but then now it's like, wait, no, plot twist, she's actually alive and she's actually someone else and now she's got a mask on. Like, I was like, what? It's like drama on drama on drama. All of a sudden, season one, season two, everything is beginning to weave together and Mary, you know, like always, is going to be in the middle of it all. Bad woman, we took a group vote, and you need to come home. What are you talking about? Angelique is being held somewhere in this dump. And while we appreciate that she's a former flame, Sophie just dropped an A-bomb. We need to figure out how to preserve your identity. We will once I find Angelique. Didn't Sophie just say that we only had a couple more hours? Yeah, I gotta be quick. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Finding Angelique is not worth throwing the bat legacy down the drain. We knew we wanted to tell this story of Alice and Batwoman on this sort of road trip together. Alice is going through this sort of feeling she's never had before, which is she has this crush on this boy and she has nobody to talk to about it. And you know, when you have a crush on somebody, all you want to do is talk about it and like, you know, talk about that person. And the only person she has to talk to is Ryan. And so she's trying to like, in her own alice way, girl talk with this woman who hates her guts. Angelique and Ocean are apparently being held at a place that is more fortified than this one, and quite frankly, I need backup. By which I mean someone to stand behind so that the bullets don't hit my visage. We're <laughs> working with Javisius. Yeah, so I haven't really worked with Javisia uh, in any sort of extended dialogue scene or, or real interaction or connection. Uh, most of it has been fight-based. And, and what we've realized is that we just become total goofballs. <laughs> it's actually, it's fine for me because my character is kind of a goof anyway, but she keeps being like, I gotta be serious. I hate you, I gotta be serious. Today especially was, was ridiculous because we were in the Batmobile together and um, you know, just having a real laugh. <laughs> so it's been really nice. If they were harmed in any way, I swear to you on my headless mother's grave. <gasps> he just passed out. Oh my God, you love him. I just kicked him for no reason. Not him, Ocean. Ocean, what? No. Was that your boyfriend? I drove a knife through his heart. Well, for you, that's not a no. Oh, that's true. I had a bit of a breakthrough at yesterday's therapy session, although it would appear all the unresolved feelings I have for him that I thought I resolved in killing him are, as of yet, unfortunately, still on the table. Last night's teenagers made it all more confusing. That's why you needed my help, to make sure he makes it out of this alive. Follow me. Stay close. Yeah, well, I also really enjoy sort of playing the character of Alice off of any character that has to be very straight-laced, very serious, because I think Alice gets a kick out of that. I think she gets a kick out of getting a rise out of these people who, you know, are very business uh, and, like, get in it done. Uh, and in the Batmobile, it's no different. She's like, you know, pressing buttons and like trying to like get the goss out of <laughs> Batwoman. And she, Batwoman is just like, enough, no. <laughs> really and truly the last couple days, like my main goal has just been to make Javicia laugh. So if, if we're in a scene and I can make her like crack a smile because she can't keep in a laugh, then I'm like, cool, that scene's done. <laughs> if you really want to know who I am, you should know this about me. I am someone who never forgets. 212 was really, really fun for me to play in as Mary. She is proud of her clinic, and I think she continues to think, maybe if I make Jacob proud, 
uh, enough that he will he will say okay and much to her surprise he does he sort of signs off on it and she thinks is this is this too good to be true because that's that kind of approval is what she's been looking for her whole life wait, wait, wait. seriously you do get that we're basically treating and harboring potential criminals here well if it means you start taking my calls again i don't need to know that thing is not plugged in i'll i'll talk to you later So I don't know if you've pay been paying attention, but we have a very um, consistent motif of weird father-daughter relationships on our show or father-child relationships on our show. And um, Black Mask and his Roman and his daughter Cersei are going to be one of those dynamics. A lot of the stuff that I had researched was online and, you know, on fandom.com and I'd gone way back to like Catherine Kane. Like I just wanted to make it, you know, authentic as possible for the viewers as well as for myself and Caroline, et cetera. What happened to Cersei wasn't just, and I feel like that's her motivation for going after um, the people that she's after. And that's that's her reason for wanting to work with her dad. Where's Batwoman? Finally, a member of this lame society who's actually trying. Love this. You can find her on the deck. I'll be back for you. Alice felt like she was confiding in another, like in a girlfriend about being like, here's this boy I like, like, do you have any advice? And she kind of put her heart on her sleeve a little bit toward Ryan, and then Ryan, you know, handcuffed her to a pole and left her for dead, so to speak, or for Black Mask. I think one of the things that I love the most about the whole universe of Batman and Batwoman is that you're dealing with someone who is not always good. They're always presented with choices um, to, to be good or to be bad, and they make the choice to be good. But they're also human, and sometimes they make the choice to not do the right thing, and of course, that means leaving Alice to die. Um, you know, it sets up this interesting dichotomy between the two of us, because as much as I've wronged her, now she's also kind of wronged me, and I think it makes the relationship a little more spicy going forward. I also think it gives Alice a little bit of a vendetta to not like her back. <laughs> I remember your mom. Cora. I remember her. Short hair, purple sweater. I lied about forgetting her. No, help me. Please. Like you said, can't save everyone. is an angel not even from this planet like she is just amazing our scenes are like they're just a lot more fueled energetically because we just have so much chemistry and we just bounce off each other purely because i feel so comfortable around her whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. i didn't even do anything i was chained to a pipe most of the night actually there is one thing she has that could be of interest Dump her in the cellar, I'll deal with her tomorrow. Yeah, it was really fun. I felt like it was role reversal because I feel like Alice is always the one torturing other characters. Um, but it, like Rachel, Rachel is such a ball of energy and Peter who plays uh, Black Mask is, you know, such, such a light as well. So we were doing these really dark scenes but there was so much energy and happiness and excitement around the room um, that it kind of really made up for it. But but they, it gets quite intense, those, those scenes. So there's definitely rivalry and um, a lot of tension between them. But Alice is obviously so smart and I think she can see behind the mask.